What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only, Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I want to react to a video, um, it's like a motivational video from 50 Cent about the biggest uh, life mistakes that are costing you time. And 50 Cent is definitely one of my favorite rappers of all time and one of my favorite businessmen as well. Before we do that, I want to give you a word from promopalace.biz. Looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard the beautiful lady. If you need online market promotion for your music product, brand, or your service, please go to promopalace.biz. You see it scrolling below. Get marketing promotions at promopalace.biz. You can also email promopalace one at gmail.com that's promo palace the number one not spelled out with letters but the actual number one at gmail.com all right let's get into it they own your work they own you your creative spirit is squashed what keeps you in such positions is a fear of having to sink or swim on your own instead you should have a greater fear of what will happen to you if you remain dependent on others for power your goal in every maneuver in life must be ownership. Work in the corner for yourself. When it's yours, it's yours to lose. You're more motivated, more creative, more alive. The ultimate power in life is to be completely self-reliant, completely yourself. The most expensive thing we spend is time. Cause we can't get it back. Before I had money, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. Right. I had fun. When we didn't have no money, we had fun. It was fun. It shifted. It's either when you get hurt that bad, either your fear consumes you or you become a bit insensitive. And you start to approach the problem instead of run from it. You know what my grandfather told me? You don't get as far as the mother you talk to for no reason. You'll be successful as a mother that you talk to for no reason. What I mean is, if you spend your day talking to a n***a that ain't got nothing going on, what the Kind of information could you offer you? Let me try, man. Let me stop right now. Um, I like what he's saying so far, man. Definitely, you definitely, um, the ultimate freedom and self reliance, self dependence. I strive for full independence in everything I do in life. Even though um, when you live in society, you're going to be dependent on things within the system. Um, then he, his grandfather was talking about the people you keep around you. The company you keep, man, is very, very important. Um, if you keep people around you that ain't talking about shit, ain't trying to do shit, that's typically what's going to be happening when you're hanging out with these people. Y'all ain't talking about shit. And y'all ain't doing shit. Um, so, yeah, let's keep it moving. Can he help you learn something? Can he teach you something in the conversation? When losing's not an option, then you got to do everything possible to win. Like, and I don't understand how they become complacent. I like that. When losing is not an option, you got to do everything possible to win. And for me... Losing in life is not an option. And feel like, oh, it's okay. You know, you get people that deal with things by not actually dealing with them. You ever seen a rich n- one start to fight? When well, don't no. love, don't start to fight. He did, he's having a good time. He's part they got battles. Right, right? When they start to fight, is not doing his work. Only just three n- in the picture. Got rich n- you got tough n- and it could easily become collateral damage. Do you want to feel like you're afraid all the time? Or do you start to become the aggressor? And you start saying, you know what? You ain't got to find me because I'm looking for you. 
And then it changes everything. Because at that point, I'm the person looking for you. Now, you don't give me all the controls because I got the buttons. I could just push them. Everyone is not actually going to be prepared to, to take the time to actually utilize the information that's given to them. If you pay attention and... Let me stop right there. He said, everybody's not going to take the time to utilize the information that's given to them. As a music promoter, as a marketing advertising guy who's dealt with well over 3,000 musicians, probably as as far as selling music promo, probably over 3,000, close to 4,000. As far as just dealing with musicians, probably 10 to 20, 30,000 musicians I've dealt with over the decade. And when you give them inf- you give them information um 99% of them don't utilize the information you give them you know and part of the problem is somebody else could be in their ear giving them totally different information or telling them the information you giving them is wrong when it's not you know and part of it is that you know talk is cheap people just say they want to do things but they don't you know actions speak louder than words so you know i could tell you hey what you should do a b c d e f g and you don't even proceed to do a yeah you're not utilizing um the time to take the information and follow through you actually keep whatever information is coming in front of you that you choose what's valuable but the things that you do here that are valuable if you make it your business to keep it even if you have to write it down so you have to say it to yourself or whatever and you just keep the person says something and you go what what did you just say almost like put in my phone and hold on to it until it becomes a part of you in the way you actually would express yourself at different points and then it'll you develop a more advanced presentation and i got that from robert they don't care about me. Is it okay for me not to care about people that don't care about me? It would be in it. Let me chime in on that. <laughs> I've always said that. You know, they don't, he said, they don't care about me. Is it okay to care about people who don't care about me? Yes, it is, 50. It's totally okay. You know, and it makes me think of, when the pandemic came in and people was acting like you're supposed to compare, you're supposed to care about complete strangers who don't care about you. No, caring is a two way street, you know, showing love for somebody is a two way street. Showing respect for somebody is a two way street, you know? So yeah, no, you don't have to care about people who don't care about you. Attaining for them to see me in crisis. Why would you care about a person who would like to see you under the worst circumstances you could be in? I had to convince myself that I'm gonna make it, you know, regardless of how people felt at that time. And what it does is it makes you feel like, or it made me feel like, there's gonna be points that people are gonna mistake my confidence for arrogance. There's- I like that. Let me stop again. Because he said, I told myself, even when people were around me telling me I'm not going to make it, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what, woo, that was a good bet. Because, I mean, Get Rich, Die, Trying, 10 million. Second album after that, 10 million. Even though that was his, technically his second and third albums, um, the first album didn't really have no major um, marketing behind it, no real support, no real push. But um, yeah, like he said, people are going to mistake my confidence for arrogance. Yeah, like if you walk around, you know, confident in everything you do in life, I'm pretty sure people will think, mistake that for arrogance. I don't understand the process of it and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things happen. I never, ever, I, I never ran from anything because I never had nobody to go to. I've always had that, where I'm going? Home to get me? 
I felt the same way right there what he said. I never ran from anything because I never had anybody to go to. You know, my pops committed suicide when I was five years old. Never really seen him. Um, mom's is there physically, but not mentally, emotionally. Stepdad stopped being my stepdad as soon as he said I do. Uh, grandparents are closest thing to um, parents as, as I had. And probably the same thing with him. I think his grandparents, 50s grandparents, are the closest thing he had to parents as well. Ain't nobody there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, I've always been in a situation where I'm forced to deal with it myself. So the most expensive thing we spend is time. So we can't get it back. Before I had money, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, but regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. I had fun. At each place? When we didn't have no money, we had fun. It was fun. Almost 90% of the time, I'm communicating with people who've achieved a higher level of education. I like what he said right there. I remember when I was a kid and we didn't have much. I had my Papa Smurf three-wheeler and I still had fun. You know, as a kid, um, like that's the thing. Being poor, being in poverty is like really a state of mind. You know, it, it's crazy how people talk about poverty, um, and they they fail to look at history like the Native Americans. You know, they they might be the same people that talk about how America did the Native Americans sitting there talking about poverty, but the Native Americans lived, um, they, they lived with the land. They didn't live on the land. You know, they were mobile um, civilizations. They moved as the buffalo moved. They followed the buffalo. You know, I don't think they felt like they were living in poverty, living in teepees. You know, people nowadays got a um, concrete roof over their head and they call that living in poverty. How is that living in poverty compared to, you know, um, people just living off, living, you know, with the land, you know, following the buffalo like the Native Americans? You know, that's the thing because being happy is a, it's a mindset. Being poor is a mindset. Um, being rich is a mindset. Like you could, your life still could be rich without having a lot of money. Because people just um, apply rich to just dollars. You could be rich in other things as well. You know, you could be rich in health. You could be rich in happiness. You know, but let me keep it moving. All right, the college graduates. So if the information that you needed in the business classes were, if everything you needed was in the book, then the teacher would be too successful to teach the class. Find something to, to fall in love. I got to stop again, too. It said, if everything is talking about... Damn, damn. A lot of what 50 saying, man, it really just... It's like... Without, you know, the armed robberies and shoot them up bang-bang aspect of his life, it's like looking in a mirror, almost. You know? Um, it really is. It really is. It's like what he said about, because everything I learned through market promotions and music, and I learned online. I learned through Google. I learned through searching out. I learned through watching YouTube videos, you know, people explaining it, explanation videos, explainers and stuff like that. Um, like you said, if all that information you need to be successful was in that one book, then the teacher would be super successful and whatnot and wouldn't really have to be teaching, you know? They'd be able to take what's in that book, apply it, and be super successful. But something to be passionate about, Let me run about, that back just right? to hear how I said it. All right, the college graduates. So if the information that you needed in the business classes were, if everything you needed was in the book, then the teacher would be too successful to teach the class. It makes sense. I mean, like, you know how many years it took me to learn um, about marketing and promoting music? It, it You know, because back in the days, it used to be street team and radio. 
now it's the internet now you know and i I started with the myspace days and then twitter come in and facebook everything keeps changing you know it, if everything was in one little spot yeah like everybody would be super successful the teacher wouldn't have to teach if the book had the you know the full manual on how to be successful but that's the thing you learn what you learn in a book but they still got to learn things outside of that book and apply it to what they do find something to, to fall in love with something to be passionate about right and then first key right there and most people i don't think most people can find something to fall in love with and be passionate about First, it started with me with with music, and even though I ain't necessarily made it as an artist, I learned marketing and advertising and promotions and things of that nature and been able to help other artists, you know. And plus, this business, it takes a lot of money to make it in this business, you know. So now I'm passionate about promoting music, advertising music, or promoting brands. I'm passionate about the podcasting now. Um, we have the Dizzle brand, which is the premium luxury liqueur. I'm passionate about Dizzle. Um, I strongly believe in the the, the brand. Um, we got the gummies now as well. Um, got the new little apparel, which is for dog lovers and cat lovers and animal lovers. That's something I'm passionate about. You know, I'm passionate about all these things that I promote business wise. I'm still passionate about making music and still being a hip hop artist, even though I'm not trying to do it as a, um, to make a living, even though I do make money off of my music, not enough to make a full living, but I do make a living off of, um, advertising and marketing, doing influencer marketing and advertising and whatnot. Cause once again, like you could give, you can sit there and consult artists and you could tell them how to set up their ads in a proper way to do it, but are they going to go do it? That's the thing. You know, most people pay me for one or two reasons because they're either too lazy to do it or they don't know how to do it. Let's keep it moving. And because you enjoy it so much, you'll be able to do it so much that you become so good that everybody's going to love and appreciate you. I think depression is a luxury. Because where I'm from, you can't afford to be depressed. You got to pay the bill, right? So you got to go to work. You got to get up. You got to go do what you got to do. It got people right now that's at work don't feel like being there. But they got responsibilities, so they, yes, feel, they feel uncomfortable while they're working, while they're doing what they got to do. I grew older. The one, one thing that becomes clearer to me each and every day is that I don't owe anyone a thing, and neither do you. I've seen a lot of people pollute their potential after sipping from the well of entitlement. This is certainly true of many of the people. Let me stop right there. I got to take a sip on that one. I see so many people dilute their potential from sipping by sipping from the well of entitlement. You know, I was just talking about that in the last video I did where the rappers ticket sales are dropping and these rappers just feel entitled to a fan base uh, musicians feeling all musicians feel entitled to this million dollar deal just because they make music and just because they make good music or great music or whatever in in the cat like oliver anthony who literally blew up like that overnight is passing up eight million dollar deals but you think you're entitled to a consumer base or a fan base or you think you're specifically entitled to something on this planet Boy, I've been associated with over the years, even my own son. What they need to understand is that you should never feel like the world owes you anything. It doesn't. You must accept that it's all on you. That might seem like a very cynical way to view the world, but I would argue that it's actually liberating. You can only feel betrayal when you feel like you're owed something from someone. You can only feel resentment when you had expectations for assistance. When you accept that it's all on you, only then can you finally. Let me run that back. I want to hear what he just said. But I would argue that it's actually liberating. You can only feel betrayal when you feel like you're owed something from someone. You, can... you only feel betrayed when you feel like you're owed something from someone. 
only feel resentment when you had expectations for assistance. When you only feel resentment when you had expectations for assistance. What he's what he's describing is people that are just totally dependent on other people and dependent on the system. And people who, you know, that's the thing. Like, I'm single, self-employed, and, yeah, I got to pay all my bills by myself. And there's times where I would sit there and get a little nervous and worried about paying my bills. But I've been paying my bills by myself for a long time now. So it's like, I don't know why I ever got worried about those things in the first place. And I try not to stress anything, you know, especially like money of all things. You accepted it's all on you. Only then can you finally be free to focus 100% on being the best version of yourself. Either I'm going to get rich or I'm going to die in the process. I'm going to do what I want to do. And then it get rich or die trying. If I die in the process, I was doing what I wanted to do. Get rich or die trying. I don't try to patch relationships. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Like, because when they fall apart and you have no idea, like, what was the motivation? It says that you don't have to be involved for it to fall apart again. I think the things you go to make you who you are. So I don't regret those things. I don't regret them because I don't think I'd be who I am today if I wasn't exposed to those situations. If you ask me what I, uh, those are unfortunate situations that I've had to experience. And if I had a choice, I would have definitely went in a different direction. I might have went, wanted to go to school for business instead of having to go through that, this portion of my life. No matter what, what group of people, whether it's your actual blood relatives, or, or people that you develop relationships over time that created value. There's points where some of them develop a sense of entitlement and it can't be met. They get blinded by what you've done and say, they're consistently saying, look what you have versus acknowledging what you've already done. Hey, I come from hospital, like that's what they was, what it was about. If there was no financial motivation connected to it, it wasn't involved. Like, now the things that they're doing is Different. Like, little homies tell you, well, you ain't got no bodies. I think the only thing that separates people is passion. And having a, the ability to focus on something, on the work on it, will allow you to work hard enough to be good enough at it. That's the Kobe Bryant run. He out work those people. A lot of people in the league perform according to their paycheck. They ain't getting that money, let them do it. And that's right. what separates him and makes him special to us in a different way, even after he's gone. Never happens on your time, like when you think you're ready. Supposed to happen. It always happens when it's supposed to happen. Because the period that you feel ready and people are not acknowledging the material the way you feel like they should because it's good, it's the time that you actually develop skin thick enough to survive when it does work. If you're spending your day talking to a n that ain't got nothing going on, what the f kind of information could he offer you? Can he help you learn something? Can he teach you something in the conversation? I wanted to bring everybody with me. So not not be someone new, be a better version of what I already was, but like you want to do the same things. They want to shoot dice, they want to have the same argument, they want to do the same thing that we did that. You know what I mean? It's just circumstances, it puts you back under the same circumstances when you already move to a different level. Like, I don't mind losing, I just like to lose at my expense. At, let it be my fault. If I'm losing based on someone else's decision to do it, I'm, I'm furious about it. I was afraid and I was uncomfortable with being afraid. It's either when you get hurt that bad, either your fear consumes you or you'll become a bit insensitive and you'll start to approach the problem instead of run from it. I try not to, to surround myself with people that I have to be defensive around. You know, and that is a defense mechanism. Like, anger is a more comfortable feeling to deal with than having your feelings be hurt or a person did something, you, you're being disappointed and the, the, the decision to do certain things. Like, you know, like some of these guys, they're going to roll with anybody that will embrace them. Anybody that'll and just be in every circle, period. Yeah, the yes men, you know. That's like I was talking about, um, you know, reacting to the Stephen A. Smith call, saying uh, Rich Paul um, got mad because 
Stephen A. Smith said LeBron was the second greatest of all time. You know, that's a yes guy. You know, he bias mindset. He, that's what he say. He don't want dudes around him that are just going to, you know, say things just to kiss his ass just because. I'm like, I'm not really comfortable with that. Like, imagine if you say, yo, my man is over here, Sean man over here at the, at the Western, I'm going to go pull up on him. And you go over there and then you run right into somebody who got a problem with you. And you all off balance because you just going, you weren't prepared to, to see Charlamagne, not prepared to run into the, you know, these people. And then you have problems. That's why I don't usually communicate or associate. If a person's on the gate, I kind of put them on the other side. So I don't put leave myself on them to do that. You know, I had to convince myself that I'm going to make it. You know, regardless of how people felt at the at that time, and what what it does is it makes it makes you feel like, or well, made me feel like, there's gonna be points that people are gonna mistake my confidence for arrogance. Yeah, um, I like that, man. I like Fifty Cent, Jay Z are two of my favorite dudes in the game. That actually, and I just listen to their music. I, I, anytime they're doing interviews, I always want to hear what they gotta say. I always want to hear what they got to say. They say a lot of interesting things, a lot of um, smart things, and a lot of what 50 said in there I totally agree with, man. You know, the company you keep is very important. Um, Like, talked about goals and whatnot. Like, a lot of people, and, and finding something you're passionate about, and most people I know in life, you can't even really, they can't even tell you like what they're passionate about. The thing that they love, that they want to try to be successful at or try to, you know, achieve some kind of financial stability doing. And the whole get rich or die trying, it makes me think about like my biggest fear in life is not really death. My biggest fear in life is not um reaching that um you know financial successful point that I want to reach in life before I die. So I'm like 50. I want to do it on my own terms. You know, I've always said that um long as I got certain people in my corner, I'm good to go. I think I've told a couple people a long time ago, as long as I got Chris Roker in my corner, I'm good to go. And as you see, I'm also on Chris Roker's corner, you know, cause he's 33% owner of Dizzle and I do whatever I can for Dizzle. You know what I'm saying? Like I promote Dizzle as much as I can, social media manager, um, posting as much as I can, promoting the brand, um, you know, po- promoting as much as I can on this, this podcast because that's how it works you know that's how it works i'm in his corner he's in mine um he's a friend and mentor he's the kind of people i need in my circle you know and that's you know that's how it goes man big ups to 50 cent one of my favorite dudes of all time one of the biggest rap albums of all time, Get Rich or Die Trying, had a number one TV show, Power. I mean, it's nothing 50 Cent. I mean, the the, the freaking Bottle Waters, Coca-Cola buying it. I mean, it's nothing 50 Cent doesn't t- do that doesn't really, you know, go to the top. I think the only big mistake I've seen 50 make was when he called out Rick Ross the baby mama and got sued for that. But uh, for the most part, man, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Shouts out to 50 Cent. Love this video. Highly motivational. Definitely. Um, and, and before I go, the thing he said about it, he kept talking about information. You know, that's one of the things we always talk about, you know, in our circle is like how we give out so much information and these people just – never apply this information and the the multiple reasons of why they never apply this information you know one being they're just lazy they're just all talk um two being somebody in their ear you know 
not telling them telling them something the complete opposite or telling them not to trust our information or they just didn't um write it down and get all the gather all the information correctly when we told them so yeah once again i don't think i'm tuning in paul pick a podcast and i'm out